So these are stories of transformation, and you can see that we don't find out what Phoebus, the nominative noun, loves until all the way at the end of the line, and everything else comes in between. That is P-H-O-E-B-U-S and, oops, I shouldn't have written that extra E on the board. My name is Publius Ovidius Naso, although I would later become better known as Ovid. I was born in a time of peace. There was a rape and a murder here just the other day. You best be careful. Please, your majesty, we ask for your clemency. We were captured on orders and forced to fight. You must die. No. 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 Your majesty, your eminence, I never knew Mark Anthony. Come on official business from your father. Your father is trying to consolidate power, which of course means strengthening ties to his generals. He wants you to marry Tiberius. Tiberius is married. Well, of course there'll be a divorce. I'm so grieving my late husband's passing. Tiberius' mother is his wife, my stepmother, what other ties does he need? You know how much your father cares about the importance of family. I have my family. I'm happy here. 
I'm afraid your father's decision is the law of the land. This isn't a monarchy or a dictatorship. It was during this time of peace I was born. Hey man, you got a coin? Uh, yeah. Tough times? Well, I was at war, my wife got sick, I got injured. What war? This is a time of peace. Peaceful for the people living within this nation. But what about our fighting overseas with our barbarous neighbors up north? Where do you think all our treasury money is going? After years of civil war, the newly anointed Emperor Augustus had finally brought peace to the Roman Empire by silencing the opposition. We are glad to have at our helm a man again who is not only such a capable leader and general, but one who truly understands Roman values and our way of life. The Republic, the Senate, and the great establishments of this empire. Senex, may I call you Senex? Of course. We are to be friends. I can't tell you how much it pains me not to have more noble families represented. In this empire, we believe in electing our government. I would not be Roman if I didn't. I want to thank you for coming to see me. We shall see more of you, I suppose. But of course. then you are really determined to restore the Republic. I have no choice. After all the bloodshed, the civil wars, it's your firm leadership that finally brought us to peace. Tiberius. What, Mother? Clearly, if we are to maintain peace, we must appease the people and noble families. We have to restore the Republic. Then how do we consolidate power and keep control? We give them values. We give the people something to believe in. So how did I, a nice boy from small town Rome, end up in the big city, the capital itself, become the most popular poet of my day, and end up in trouble with the brutal emperor? My story starts in the small town of Solmo, where we lived a simple agrarian way of life. My parents' generation had known only war, but thanks to the Pax Augustus, the peace created by Emperor Augustus, we had known only tranquility. Bobby, Bobby, the men are here for you. The Emperor's men are here for you. They came all the way from Rome, Abed. Apparently, being from a small town and of equestrian rank gave me the right values that qualified me to be a Paul. Abed, Abed. And just like that, they intruded on my life. Of course you'll go. It's not even a question. Is it a rhetorical question? Don't be witty. I'm not being witty. I'm being rhetorical. Stop being smart, Ovid. Isn't that what politicians are supposed to be? Not necessarily. I don't understand your resistance to this. Here you've been hand-selected by the emperor, by his eminent Caesar Augustus, to receive the best education you could possibly receive, to work for the government, and you want to throw it all away because you'll miss the babbling brook at the end of the property and the dirt road uh, you played on as a child. Yeah. Not to mention. Just a side note. For any of you out there who thought you were the first one to be completely misunderstood by your parents, this was 31 BCE. And you've been hand-selected to help the Senate more fairly represent the outlying provinces so that you could help this great empire reach its potential, so that you can make society a better and just place to live in. My name is Nose. God bless Rome. My name is Nose. I don't understand, Ovid. Are you listening to me? The boy is complaining about his name again, Karina. Our name is Naso. That means Nose. But let's just say I learned a lot and did really well. How far do you really think I'd get? 
All hail our great leader and national hero, Mr. Or should I say, Senator Knows. What is that? He really knows, oops, pardon my pun, how to sniff out the bad and find the good. Did you say Publius Ovidius Naso? I hated when they addressed me by my full name. Nuqua quid erat, erat. I hated when they used their formal Latin. We did. We did. The Cicero quotes were the worst. This particular one was from when Catalan had stormed into the Roman Senate after he betrayed it. Quo usque tangum abutere patientia nostro. Be dead, be dead. Look what you've done to your mother in this time of peace. Is this why your grandfather fought with the Roman legions? Is this why your uncle is fighting right now against Mark Antony in the Battle of Actium all the way in Egypt? Carpe diem, Ovid. Seize the day. And just like that, it was settled. I would go to Rome. A buck eighty, but I hold my ground. So hot, I walk barefoot. With Hey, man. Hey, hi. You new here? Uh, yeah, I, j I just got here. <sighs> oh, Maximilius, by the way. But you can call me Max. I'm, uh, Ovid. It's nice to meet you, Max. So what brings you to the city, man? Oh, I was recruited by the government, so law and government. Basically. Oh, one of those. I get it. Pass a few laws, preside over a few executions, hobnob with the emperor's people. I get it. Nah, it wasn't exactly the plan. I'm just fucking with you, man. I mean, maybe a little execution. <laughs> I'm not. I'm fucking with you. Chill. Anyway, it's a great city. Been here five years. Never gets old. After all, this is Rome, man. The capital of our empire. The center of our universe. You know, it's got great nightlife, great shopping, and whoa, the women. Hey, that's why they call it the city that never sleeps. You know what I'm saying? Because everyone's having sex. Anyway, uh. I gotta run, but take it easy. Look me up if you ever need anything. 5E. Father's podium. Be careful. We might ask you to preside instead. Senex, <laughs> my darling. How are you? Oh, as good as ever, my dear. I miss you, Senex. I never see you at the Capitoline building where all you senators supposedly work. You might not miss me so much if they ever restored the actual powers of the oh. Roman Republic. You were always my favorite. <laughs> Maybe I can help. Please do! Order! Order! I never thought I'd see you wielding your father's gavel. Well, you know how much blood ties and family values mean to us. Good evening, fine citizens of Rome. In honor of the 15th year of the restoration of the Republic, through no democratic vote at all, we have appointed our emperor, Caesar Augustus's daughter, Julia, to take his place at his almighty podium and to see how she, through the barter of sexual favors, <laughs> might fix the current political situation. <laughs> First on the docket, world hunger. It has come to my attention that in the developed world, while those of us in the upper classes have plenty to eat, everyone else seems to be out of work and at times starving. My solution? Fellatio. <laughs> yes, one lucky man or woman, as the case may be, who can solve this problem of iniquity, institutionalized by our governing order, 
will receive a blowjob from yours truly. <laughs> and remember, this is no ordinary spit. The spit that will alight your dong is royal saliva <laughs> passed down from the divine emperor himself. Okay, second on the list. True restoration of the Roman Republic. It has come to my attention, through my position as royal baby maker and diaper changer, that while we supposedly have a representative government, this representative government has no actual power. Furthermore, it appears that the senators have nothing better to do than hang out with this divine baby maker, since no senatorial work is being done at all. To solve this, I offer you, I offer you the whole pack. Conolingus and all. Stop, Julia. Stop. This is too much. Lepidus. Your father will be outraged. So today we will be looking at the Augustan Law Code and in particular updates since the Pax Augusta was established along with the restoration of the Republic. Okay, can everyone flip to page two? Psst. Thanks, Amelia. What are you doing here? Shh, shh. I go to school here. What? Today we will be looking at new laws such as the Lex Ulia de Maritandis Ordinibus and the Lexulia de Adulterius Coercentis. Can anyone you tell me school here? Lexulia de Adulterius Coercentis is? I thought you were making fun of me for being a law student government type. <clears throat> yeah, I was. Well, that's my nighttime persona. Your what? My nighttime persona? For the uptown clubs and the art scene, I like to play music and shit. Your nighttime okay, persona. Okay, everyone looking at page two. Lex de Maritandis Ordinimus. Roman males who do not marry are to remain under the financial guardianship of their fathers. So this is your daytime persona? Uh, yeah. Does everyone have that? It should be fairly straightforward. This law is clearly intended to promote marriage and family. Look, man, it's not that weird. A lot of poets do it. Poets? Poets, you know, the people that are speaking, the words that you're hearing. It's poetry. Okay, next. Uh, Lex Ulia de Adulterius Coercendus. What? Gentleman in the first row seems to have something to say. Or perhaps your neighbor, the young lady in the glasses, can assist you. It's a law recently enacted to stamp out adultery. It states that both offenders will be exiled to two different islands, and the adulterous man will lose half his property. Very good. One indiscretion, two islands. Okay, great. Moving on. Why would Augustus try to legislate and govern people's private lives? Roman values. How could you do this? My own daughter! My own bloodline. Don't you know how hard I am trying, trying to bring Rome back to its glorious state? All the people that I'm trying to satisfy, to, to encourage and promote good values like family and marriage. And now this. This, holding public revels and bartering sexual favors at, at my, my sanctified podium. I just figured. What? I figured since I gave sexual favors to my husband, your stepson Tiberius, for the advancement of your career, Surely I could help out by offering them to others, too.
gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the penitentiary jurist, otherwise known as the prison of law. Is there any other kind? You can almost hear the daily sentencing in the background. Meticulous, 10 years. Octagonalius, 40 years, possession of cannabis. Rectangularbus, life, test of Herculean statue. Ovid, are you paying attention? Yes, yet, uh, theft, uh, life for theft of Herculean statue. Statue of Hercules. Good. Tomorrow, we will resume here to witness an actual working trial. I see real promise in you all. Ovid. Oh, oats and beans and barley grow. Oats and beans and barley grow. Nor you nor I nor anyone know. Oats and beans and barley grow. Happened to your friend? I think he's got the love bug bad. He saw a beautiful girl in the courts today. Possibly two. I'm still unclear about it. I love her. Oh, uh, I love I love her. Uh, the uh. I see you and now I'm in love, but No. I'll never see her again. Well, listen, if you boys aren't busy tomorrow night, I'm doing a poetry slam at the olive tree. Yeah, yeah. totally. We would love to be there, wouldn't we all? Yes, yes, yes we would. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll try to make sure he's sober. It's probably a good idea. We've just about got the city under control now. Living in a crib, no heat, no water. Pockets on E, just hand me a daughter. So I gotta get it like I know I can. Blowing on can, chopping up brands. So in the case of the Treasury versus Liviana Romanalis, will the prosecution please call this last witness? The prosecution would like to call the defendant herself, Liviana Romanalis. Will you please hold the Jupiter statue and raise your right hand? Do you, Liviana Romanos, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you gods? I do. The prosecution may not start. You okay, ma'am? Rough night? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. So, how much did you owe the treasury? 4,000 aureus. And how much did you pay back at the end of the year? Two. I'm sorry, can you speak up so everybody can hear? 200 Aris. 200 Aris. That's 3,800 Aris less than you owed. And did you not sign a contract that said if you did not pay back the sum total of your loan by the end of this calendar year, you would give up all of your possessions, land, and house. I did. The defendant signed a contract with the Treasury that if she did not pay back her loan, which she did not, <laughs> she would have to give up all of her property. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. The prosecution rests its case. Thank you, prosecution. The defense may now take the stand. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Why, Liviana Romanalis, did you agree to take the loan to begin with? I did not. You did not. Then who did? My husband. Ooh. The government, in an effort to encourage farmers, offered large loans to buy land and oxen. At the time, it seemed like a good idea. Our land was fertile, and my husband was healthy. And then the plagues hit and all of our oxen and cattle were killed. My husband became ill and he eventually died. I had no way to pay back the treasury. And all of our savings had gone to pay the doctor bills. And how did your name end up on the contract? Roman law states that when the husband dies, the wife inherits his wealth or his debt. So you were forced to sign the document? Yes. By law, I was. 
And what will happen to you and your daughters if you lose your property? We will be forced to the streets to fend for ourselves. The defense rests its case. We just ask that you act with compassion, Your Honor. I, of all people, understand the few recourses that are left for women of a certain class in Rome. However, you do understand that the law is the law. Man, you gotta lay off the fermented grapes, you know what I'm saying? You were singing Oats and Beans and Barley Grows last night, and that song doesn't sound like it's gonna be around for another half millennium. I'm fine. I just, I just gotta remember to drink more water next time. Court is now in session. Chief Scholar Gaius, have you selected a pupil to read the verdict? I think Ovid would like to read because he's been so attentive during this trial. Well. Thank you, Your Honor. What do you mean, no? The verdict is guilty. I mean, no, I'm not going to read it. Do you realize it is your duty as a student of law and government in the Empire of Rome? I know. And I'm not going to read it. Do you understand, young man, that you will not achieve status as a government official if you do not comply with your duties? Then, then I'll be a poet. <laughs> My dear boy, that is not practical. Then it will be practical. Alvin, are you crazy, man? A poet? Have you lost your mind? I mean, it's one thing to moonlight like me, but to go full time and just throw away your whole... Plus, you are so damn lucky that judge was in a good mood today. You could have been held in contempt of court. I'm a personal recruit of the Emperor Augustus. They'll never do that to me. And besides, man, I hate to bring this up, but your last name is Nose. And I just don't think you can have a literary career with the last name Nose. Okay, I got it. What are you gonna do all day, man? Just sit around and write about your non-existent love life? And who ever heard of a practical poet that's like a cold fire or an uncooling hex? You know what I'm saying? What do you mean by restless? Well, there are those among a lower class who are jobless and lack other resources. And you say they're increasingly restless? Well, they would at least like to feel like they're not being ignored. This job's not good for the economy. Will they revolt? Not yet, but it would be my advice to somehow start paying attention to them. Lipidus, Livia. And what do we do now? I think we need to provide a distraction. A distraction? Yes. We need to remind them what their country stands for. The values and building blocks that make this great empire the greatest in the world. The reasons why countless Roman legions have gone to their death to protect us from those blonde-haired, blue-eyed barbarians up north. We need to remind them of their Roman values. Roman values, eh? I mean, family values. How am I supposed to do that when my own daughter undermines me at every turn? I told you, Augustus, she's making you look like a hypocrite. You need to rein her in. Yes. Thank you, dear. 
Well, Your Honor, if I may be so bold as to suggest, a scapegoat. A scapegoat? A scapegoat. A public shaming using Julia as an example of what will happen if you do not live up to the moral foundations that make this empire great. You know, of course, this is my only living daughter. No matter what her flaws may be. Everyone loves a common cause. We may be suffering, but we have our values. What say you? Well, I haven't gathered the data together yet, but I imagine what Lipidus is saying could be correct. All right, an exile then. the law is the law, whether you read the defendant's verdict or not, her goose is still cooked. I mean, she's still going to lose all her property. You're just the messenger. Look, if you if you were to go for a leisurely stroll, where would you go? Some people go to school to study. Fine. I go to the games. I, I would go to a colonnade. Octavia's. No, maybe Pompeii's. I mean, there was this one time I was out and there was this man and Job, I think we have something. Who was that man? No, I'm just kidding, Agrippina. Hey, who was that woman, though? What woman? You know, the one at the courthouse. Uh -huh. She was quite beautiful. <laughs> well? Well, what? Who is she? Uh, she's my father's brother-in-law's cousin twice removed. Don't even think about it. She's married. Married. Lexiulia the adulterous, bro. Here often. It's a water fountain. Yeah, I know. It's, um, it's good water, right? Oh, yeah. This is what I've always wanted my entire life. Somebody who likes to drink water as much as I do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's relatively clean, though, right? It's not too acidic. It hasn't got typhoid or malaria. Not in this one. <laughs> Don't you have anything better to do than try and pick up women by comparing the pH balance of public water works? Chocolate? No. Here's a hint for your future conquest, green boy. Don't use gifts. I'm either gonna like you or I'm not. And secondly, I'm married. It is an arranged marriage. But still, extramarital, federal offense. And if you do want to have an affair, use discretion. Make friends with the maid. Show off your strengths. You like art? Go to an art museum. You're strong? Then show off your muscles. But don't use a water fountain to try to pick up women. For fuck's sake, everybody likes water. Don't I know you? I don't know. From the courthouse. You're the practical poet. <laughs> Good luck with that.
Hey, thank God you're here. I was worried about you, bro. I was wondering what you were up to since, you know, you dropped out of- No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, man. I, I, I figured out some stuff to do. My dad is pissed, though, man. He says I'm gonna be a pauper. Rough, man, rough. Uh, sorry about your money thing, but remember, Night persona <laughs> and, and Max don't associate with no law students, all right? Yeah. Okay, come on. Not the ones that they've imported from Upper Germania. The local farm fresh ones are to die for. They're amazing. Max, hey, we made it. Thank you for coming. Of course, Chloe, you know we dig you. Ovid, you came too. It's good to see you. I heard you're determined to become a practical poet. Oh, yeah, that was, it's, it's pretty stupid. <laughs> Not that poetry's, I, I financially ruined my life. Anyway, yeah, it was, it was pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> He's oh. oh, uh, that's my set. Well, if you like what you see, you should try it. Be cool, try and be cool. Yo, ma'am, hi. Can I help you? Uh, your mistress is Corinna, correct? Is that any of your business? When is it easiest to find Corinna by herself? Why do you need to know? Then she is Corinna. Can I help you with your load oh. then? Yes. <laughs> oh my, Fabia. I see you found yourself a lover. Well, good for you, Fabia. I always knew you had it in you. But really, here in the sheets, no. <laughs> there must have been a more romantic spot. This, this isn't what it seems. I'm sure it isn't. No, <laughs> I, I came here for you. I saw you in the court and I was struck by your beauty. I'm sure you did, dear. I know men can be promiscuous these days, but really two in one afternoon. <laughs> Fabia. Well, the whole reason for buying the local Etruscan olives is so that you can save the horseshoes necessary for transporting imported food. So we can divert the iron resources for other projects. Oh my God. Look who's back. What up, Doe Olive Tree? What up, Doe? What up, Doe what up, do Olive Tree? What up, Doe? What a night, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Some night, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we talk society. We slammed, as usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just heard a war poem from oh. one of our national heroes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, you can give it up for Bertha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess that is why we dominate the world. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the roots to the truth, this is what we do. Ladies and locusts, senators and soldiers, follow me to the olive tree. Yes. Our poetry, poignant, powerful, honest. And now, now, the hour is upon us. Oh, man. Let us open up the floor to new voices we've not heard before, huh? Yeah. 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 Might we have a neophyte tonight? Ah. Anyone, any two, it's all up to you. Even Woo. if you've never read before, now is your time to shine because you know what we say. Season day! You know what we say! Season day! One more time! Season day! Let's seize the day! Any brave souls among us? Ah! Now there's a man whose hand I've not seen raised before. Why don't you come up here, young blood? Yeah, you got to earn that at the olive tree. <laughs> yeah, uh, what's your name? Ovid. I, I can't hear you, please. Ovid. Yeah. I, I, Ovid? Ovid. 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 The poem is about love. It's called Amores. Amores? The object of love? Uh, well, it also means lovers. The object of love? Sounds like a love poem from a lover who ain't getting it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Amores. Lovers. It was sultry, and, and the day had driven out the middle hour. Look, Corinna comes veiled in an unbelted tunic with her parted hair covering her fair neck. How flat her stomach, how youthful her thigh. Why do I need to report on every feature? I, s- I, saw, nothing not to, to, I saw nothing not to praise, and I pressed her naked body right up to mine. Uh, yep. Clearly another lover who isn't getting any. <laughs> Does it help you to masturbate to dream these scenarios? He <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> just realized it. <laughs> just let that off the stage. <laughs> Oh, oh, come on, Abe. He's about to cry. Abe. Oh come on, Abe. Is this cat a poet or a person? <laughs> <laughs> and that's your fourth one this week. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, you completed one year at the Academy of Law and Government, and you dropped out. Yes, that, that's correct. But you were an Augustan recruit from the Emperor's office? Yeah, I'm from small town Rome, equestrian class. And you did say that you completed one year at the academy. A year and some, in fact. Well, I guess we could find you a job. I do know we have a sentencing position opening up. Um, Yes, here it is. A full-time paid position, sentencing of capital punishments. Employee must read out and certify death sentences to accused criminals. Bureaucratic experience a must. Equestrian class preferred. Well, you'd be good at sentencing, wouldn't you? I mean, they cover that in first year, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they do. It's my maid's afternoon off. Hello. Oh my, it's Fabia's lover. I'm afraid she's not in today. No, Corinna, I'm here for you. My, you are fickle. <laughs> well, I never did think Fabia had any taste, so. May, may we speak inside for a moment? That's a bit forward, don't you think? I noticed you at the courts. You watched with such intensity as though you suffered with each passerby, seeking justice for all. And your beauty, your gentle curls falling over your face as if to mask your inner soul. I'm married, you know. But since you seek solace with strangers, a forced match. You're not here for Fabio? I offered to help your maid and I tripped on the sheets. You swear you're not here for Fabio? I swear. What do you swear on? By Jove's mighty lightning bolt. By your shaking limbs. By Minerva, the goddess of wisdom herself. Mr. Ovid the Nose, what do you do? Well, I'm a poet, poet. I guess. <laughs> and how are you going to make any money with that? I'm going to be a practical one. Practical? Practical indeed. <laughs> but you have to stop lounging around bedrooms with married women. <laughs> getting that wound dressed. We're in a time of peace. 
veterans don't get benefits. But what about our fighting over in Carthage? <laughs> that doesn't count. It's beyond our borders. Well, there's trouble brewing in this time of peace. They say the number of jobless is growing and they have begun to take to the streets. I talked to Marcus down on the Via Romana. It's not good. What are they gonna do? Occupy a portico? Look, everyone has blades like you. There could be violence. No law in this city bans a sword or dagger. The Senate shot that down last year. Her wanton leaflets? How can leaflets be wanton? Her wanton... Ringlets? Her wanton ringlets. You know, Ovid, if you really want to be a practical poet, maybe you should stop trying to seduce women and write a sensible farmer's manual, like Virgil. He tells people when to sow seeds and when to harvest them. And he says it all in verse. Agrippina. You're a genius. <laughs> you... <laughs> What is he up to now? Hey, I gotta get on the program tonight. Excuse me, but who are you? The greatness of Rome was not built in one day, and neither shall our futures be built this way. Rome number one. 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 Rome number one, let's put it down for Virgil, everybody. Let's put it down for Virgil. Huh? You know he's right. You know he's right. I know he's right. When it comes to military muscle, Rome's number one. When it comes to culture, Rome's number one. When it comes to cuisine, Rome's number one. Art, Rome's number one. Philosophy, Rome's number one. Lady, Rome's number one. Rome is number. One. Yeah. All right. So next up, <laughs> another poet that uh, I believe some of you have heard from once before. Publius Ovidius Naso. <laughs> <laughs> you can give him a little bit out of it. Yeah, not too much. Not, not too much. <clears throat> Ovid has returned. I was preparing to tell about weapons and violent war in serious meter. When Cupid said, Cupid, the virgin love poet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. When Cupid said and laughed, who gave you, cruel boy, this power over poetry? The virgin love poet. Oh, oh hail the, the virgin. <laughs> if you wanted to find a lover, where would you go? <laughs> the virgin love poet. The virgin love poet. Where would you go? Where have you gone? Oh, shit. Um. <laughs> That's what I thought. What about you, sir? After you found her, how would you keep her? How would he keep you, ma'am? Yeah, how would you keep me? I, I, I would uh, get her jewelry. Chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> and where would you find her? Th through my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone in this crowd who does not know the art of lovemaking, let him hear my expertise and gather my magic formula. <laughs> Venus has appointed me the very mastermind of love. Oh, hell, the virgin. Oh. Pleasure and skill provoke this work. Pay attention. I speak from experience. Aren't you being a bit racy? Well, anyone who hides their body with long dresses or wears delicate ribbons as an emblem of decency, leave. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rome has so many luscious beauties. If you desire youth, a thousand girls abound. Or if you enjoy wiser ladies, skilled from years of experience, <laughs> they, they too, believe me, yes, will be plentiful. So where do we find these bucks and beauties? Yeah. <laughs> Walk slowly in the shade to Roman's Colonnade, or the portico, named after that vendor Empress Livia. Yeah. <laughs> Empress Livia's or Pompey's portico? Those are sacred spots of the empire. That's treasonous. <laughs> yes, and what if I marry? Oh, then the tiered theater would be most fruitful for you. There, you can find a lover who you can have a one-night stand with or who you can play with for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> what if she says no? Yeah, what if I say no? Even if she rejects you, rejoice. Why be discouraged when there's pleasure in new delights? Crops are more abundant in another's field, and the neighboring herd has richer milk. <laughs> Ovid the love poet. You rocked it, man. You rocked it. Hey, hey, Ovid. Where can I buy a copy, man? I gotta get that shit. For my friend. You were heretical, offensive, a complete chauvinist. And I loved every moment of it. Oh, that was amazing. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. You've rid the land of the Empire's worst adulterer. Oh, yes. Perhaps now peace and stability can ensue. I struck the right tone with my speech. Oh, yes. I thought the parts about commitment to the values of the Roman people and safeguarding the sanctity of marriage were particularly good. Well, now I've always believed that a good moral backbone will make this nation great. And stability at home means stability in the world, doesn't it? I just hope that Julia the Younger does not turn out like her mother. What was that? I hope that Julia the Younger, your granddaughter, does not turn out to be like her mother. And why would you say that? Haven't we made an example of her mother, my only living daughter? Well, yes. But you know that most people who've committed treason have been sentenced to death. Having her imprisoned away from everything she's ever known, cherished or loved, showing that not even my, my only daughter can escape when moral codes are violated. Well, yes, love, my love. But I have heard things. Heard things? Well, yes, things. Heard what? Well, that perhaps Julia the Younger has inherited some of her mother's traits. She has been known to carry on in not the most savory manner. What a shame she wasn't born of your blood. Well, besides, there's a young poet of increasing popularity named Ovid. Who's Ovid? Who is Ovid? The age which is apt for war is also suitable for love. Lovers use the sleep of husbands and move their weapons after the enemy's sleep. <laughs> How's everything with the poetry? Good. Good. <laughs> Run slowly, horses of the night. Why should I be punished because your husband's feeble? 
Surely I did not match you with an aging man. Tacitus isn't your husband? Another lover? What is that? Oh, something of Fabia's. Silly Fabia. You and I both know that's a lie. All lovers are soldiers. Mm -hmm. Believe me, even Cupid has his own camp. Both lover and soldier keep watch all night. Those qualities which generals look for in a brave soldier, a beautiful girl seeks too. And let your mistress come and go as she pleases. Husbands let this happen with their wives. With soft slumber, add to the intrigue. <laughs> for yourself. Congrats. Things are great. Where have you been at lately? Well, you know. Listen, man, I'm in. You're gonna love it. Nighttime persona's gonna love it. I've, I've got all these hookups. Virgil just gave me a call. You gotta come out, man. Well, that sounds great, but uh, I don't do that stuff no more. What? What do you mean? You know, for me, it's like a balance, and uh, daytime persona's kind of taking over. You know, with me and Agrippina. Well, Agrippina? Hey, Max don't associate with no law school students. Well, she's the smartest in the class, so Max kind of do associate with her, and it's getting pretty serious, actually. Okay, well, come on, man. That doesn't mean you, you can't still have a good time. Look, man, I have to be a practical lawyer, and well, Agrippina wants to settle down and start a family, and you... You may be in real trouble with the government. I mean, real danger if you keep going on like this. Uh, hey, man, keep it real. Yeah. Hey, you're missing out. Hey, you know, Agrippina's the best lawyer in the business. Well, since there might be trouble. I'm uh, real happy for your success. You know, thanks. So you're a uh... You know, I've always wanted to go home with a man named Nose. Well, then perhaps I'll nuzzle you. Distance yourself from crime. Be free of murder. Trick only girls if you have sense. And cheat cheaters. They sink into their own traps. You're in for a treat. Because this cat coming up next truly earned his stripes up here. He is without question our most popular poet. Now look, I don't know what ladies love more, his locks or his lyrics, but they love him. 
reading from his best-selling book, The Art of Love. Albert the Love Poet. Let's get it, baby. Let's get it. Come on, man. These wicked verses, too, are born of that small-town poet, Nazo, appointed by Naughty Love. <laughs> Austere people stay at a distance. This theater of illicit rhythm is by no means suitable for your tender ear. Come on now. To capture your desire, swear on anything you like. <laughs> Who's there? Christmas. I'm a plebeian. What do you want? I'm a friend of your mother's. The people... How do I know that? What do you want? There's unrest in the camp. People are starving and out of work. There could be violence. <laughs> what if you're a prude? Alvin, what if you're a prude? <laughs> Again, no long skirted respectable ladies figure in my fun. Yeah. <laughs> what about gifts? Don't use them. The only gift you give should be that of your own body. Ooh. By which, of course, I mean your wit and charm. <laughs> oh, look, there seems to be a beautiful woman waving at me. See what I mean about not needing material gifts? <laughs> what about the women, Ovid? What about us? What about you? <laughs> I seem to devote a fair amount of time to you. Right? <laughs> but I mean, all of your writing is for men. How to catch us, keep us, tame us? When do we get ours? Do we have no say in our destinies? I guess the lady does have a point. What is your name? Tacita. Tacita. Would you like me to finish the poem? Yes. 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 That would be lovely. Our great Achilles was in battle, so I am in love. Celebrate me as a prophet, lad. Sing my praises. Tell the world I, I have given you weapons. Go out and use them to conquer. Yeah. Hey, 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 look. Over there, girls now ask for lessons. I give over. Yours shall be my instant concern. In the name of his eminence, Emperor Caesar Augustus, freeze. Surely you can't be arresting me for finally giving advice to the ladies. You are hereby fined for contempt of Roman policy. Aren't we the center of the enlightened universe? Don't get smart. You have the right to remain silent. stone collection you got there. Thanks. Don't I know you? How'd I know? You always pick out special stones to desecrate royal property? <laughs> Don't worry, they're soft. 
careful. It might get us in trouble with the state. Isn't that why we're in here? Well, that must be why you're in here. I'm in here for words. Words? Words. So what, are you a great writer? I'm no Virgil or Homer. <laughs> then what, Mr. Writer? If not an epic national poem, do you write? Sketches. 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 Trivialities. Love poems. Then why are you here in the Federal Gallows of the Emperor? And surely those trite words couldn't have plagued the ear of His Eminence Caesar Augustus. <laughs> Wasn't that. You've heard of Augustus's moral reforms? How could I not? Well, I wrote a book. An instruction manual so to speak, and it was on the art of love. Our armies burning and pillaging villages out west, our slaves and our farmers dying of plague and famine. But Augustus decides to reestablish Roman virtues and family values. I included a section on how to have a love affair. And his daughter, when Julie the Elder is exiled for philandering. Well, that was you. So you have heard of me. Who then, my inquisitive friend, are you? Well then, I am one Julia the Younger, granddaughter to my jailer, daughter to the exiled Julia. Family connections aren't what they used to be. That will be 500 aureus. Weren't you that prized Augustan recruit? Yeah, yeah, I was. You are lucky to get away with just a fine. Someone may have been looking out for you. For treason, you could be sentenced to death. Treason? Death? Well, you do know what the charges are, don't you? Off oh, darling. Oh, darling Rose, where have you been? Oh, you had me so worried. You really do need to stop saying such treasonable things, promoting love affairs and stuff. You're gonna make Emperor Augustus furious. You wouldn't want to worry me now, would you? Well, should we stop doing what we're doing? What? Nobody knows what we're doing. What do you know about Julia? Who? Julia the Younger, Augustus's granddaughter. <sighs> what do you know about her? Ovid, how should I know? Would you stop talking about politics all the time? Everybody's so bent out about politics these days. I hear these veterans are thinking about rioting because something about lacking food and no benefits. But we're in a time of peace and prosperity right now. There's no wars going on. So, what do you know about Julia the Younger? I know that she's connected to some sort of political opposition. And Augustus knows about this. Ovid, how would I know if Augustus knows about it or not? Now stop being a bore. Come to bed. I thought being a bore was something you accused your husband of being. Well, it is. But I was forced to marry him. And with you, it's a choice. You know this is an exilable offense. Then exile me.
Excuse me. I'm sorry, but you can't sleep here. And the library closes in half an hour. Budget cuts. You'll have to finish up and hurry up. And as I speak, time flies and the years do pass. Psst. Julia. It's me, Ovid. We met... We met under not the best of circumstances years ago. By which you mean federal prison. Well, yes, but, and before that. Shh. Do you realize how much trouble we could get into if we were seen here together? That's a risk I'm willing to take. Why? Well, I guess I've always seen something different in you. By which you mean I am the Emperor's granddaughter, all of which would grant you connections beyond your wildest dreams, except he wants me dead. Your wit and your intellect. And I believe you are involved in an anti-despotic organization in which I may have some interest. I hope this isn't some pickup technique promoted in your most popular and controversial tone. I have read it, you know. Did you ever know me to advise picking up a lady by gaining access to a top secret political organization? No. But you do realize that this is a treasonable offense. Both our heads are under surveillance. No, 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 no. I've given up my instructions on love. I've become a clean man. Shh. No longer challenging authority. What do you want with me, then? I told you. I'm not after love. Then you do realize the depths of danger you'll be sinking into. My grandfather, for instance, saw a general taking notes, had him stabbed on the spot, thinking him a spy. These are tough times, and Augustus will take brutal precautions. Have you read my latest work? Are you listening to me? I swear this is not a I recent... have read your manual on love, yes. No, have you read my latest work? Another triviality. It's about old myths. It's stories of people changing, beasts becoming men. Gods becoming beasts. Gods becoming beasts. It sounds a bit heretical. Meet me at the corner of Yevlavia at nine tonight. So you were able to distribute the grain to the encampments by the forum? Yes, I was. And thank you for those resources. Thank you. We will be in touch when the new supplies arrive. Till then. Till then. So, who, my sister, have you brought this time? This is the poet Ovid. I've heard of you. Few people have. Modest. People seek out your love poems far and wide. We met in prison. <laughs> Ovid, this is my brother Agrippa Posthumus. Weren't you exiled? I was. You know, I may have used some uh, advice from your book, Ars Amatoria, to help placate my wife during our separation. <sighs> our grandfather had him exiled under the pretense that my brother's bad temper could somehow hurt the empire. He was no doubt under the influence of our step-grandmother, Livia, and our stepfather, Tiberius, who have plans to seize power once Augustus is gone. Now, all of this is top secret, of course. Of course. So, with a network of army officials, we snuck my brother back into Rome to help us with our activities. And what, may I ask, are your activities? Do we trust him? He was the one person who managed to drive Gramps Augustus into a rage when no one else could get to him. There are some of us, including our dear mother, who no one has heard from in years, who believe the Republic should truly be restored. Yeah, instead of whatever figurehead institution we have now under the guise of Roman values. We believe elections and senators will more fully represent our nation. 
by taking this position, you would end your own hereditary line. Yeah, we know. So why are you doing this? Would you like to take a walk? Nothing to us. We don't want no trouble. We are good people. I swear. We were We're not gonna do anything for some twenty years. I know. Before it We're not the government. I swear. We're just looking for Christmas. Okay. We're friends. We're friendly. Christmas. He's down in the main settlement. Can you please be careful of my husband? He's sleeping. Sleep. It's unrest over the grain shortage. And... Polis, damn it! Where are you? Polis! Polis! My lord, I think I found him. Polis? Polis? This is not your wife. I thought you were sleeping, sir. You thought I was sleeping? Yes, sir. Polis. This will mean death. Oh, sir. <laughs> Surely my yes, king. death! I cannot and I will not tolerate disobedience from even within my own home. Take him! Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait! <clears throat> Surely you must be kidding, sir. Everybody's doing it these days. Senators, officers. Why? Even Abbott, Roman's most popular poet. He's giving advice on how to have a love affair. Yes. Take him. No, wait! No! No!
this city, there will always be life. So have you been allied with the encampment for long? I try to do what I can to divert grain. What we really need is a change in governing system. I mean, right now, all of our money's filtered through Augustus. The fuck grain handouts. We want jobs. That's right. Fuck grain handouts. They want jobs. Big project. People are organizing. But yes. Crispus. Julia. This is Alvin. Ah, ours armatoria, the art of love. Yes. So you're viewing our encampment. Unemployment's bad. I understand that. Soldiers returned from war, came back to close down mills. Oh my God! Look. Oh, talent. Such joy. So what have you been working on lately? Old myths. Metamorphoses. You know, Apollo chasing Daphne until she becomes a tree. Wait. You wrote the latest version of Daphne turning into a tree? Yes. So I'm told. That's what my pen and paper seem to suggest. So Daphne and Apollo, that's you. We aim to please. It's my latest work. Oh my God. So then you wrote that line that Daphne yells at Apollo. If I cannot be your wife, then I can certainly be your tree. Oh my God, I love that line. And when she's, she's turning into a tree and, and she just wants to be something for him. Oh. I mean, I can really relate to that. Oh. Shall we continue to the tracks? Amelia's palace. Yes. So you do remember the first time we met? It was long before prison. Yes. It occurred to me by the water fountain. I was rude. You set me on my path. You know, I used some of what you told me in my art of love. Really? Hmm. What are the chances? Shoulder may be treasonous, but perhaps dancing is not. No, dancing is not. Your ladyship.
do it for your country. becoming increasingly paranoid. I heard he, he made his man Paulus. He forced him to commit suicide. Louis, tell me a story. Livia and Tiberius are vengeful. What? Livia, my step grandmother, and Tiberius, my step father. They're vengeful. I think they want us dead so they can accede to power. From your poem, Metamorphosis. Yes. Please, forgive the rough treatment, Julia. At least give us a fair hearing, grandfather. Did you not compare a noble Roman army to a lover when I had explicitly outlawed affairs? I'm not sure. Didn't I recruit you into our government? I'm speaking to you, Publius Ovidius Naso. Yes. And what have you done for me? Do you like witty poetry? Need I remind you of it, that I am the emperor? Yo, I got you, Jay. I rounded up a bunch of peeps from my youth. You'll see. Thank you, Cornelia. From your amours, all lovers are soldiers. Believe me. A gallant soldier besieges cities. A lover his mistress's house. One breaks down the gates. 
the other household doors. Find them unarmed and slaughter, I can't. You do realize that this is our army, under gods we trust, that you've compared the army that brought peace back into this land, that restored the republic that defends us against the Anglo-Saxons and the Gauls and the uncouth barbarians that ravage our borders. I, I do, your eminence. I said they were gallant. What was that? Y you do remember you're on trial here for seditious acts. In addition to that, you've likened fornication to our very judicial system. Cornelia. If sex is equally pleasing to both partners, why should one sell sex and buy it? It is unethical for witnesses to sell false testimony. It is unethical for judges to pocket bribes. If the defense may interject. In defense of my client, there is no actual proof in either of those examples that the defendant was promoting <clears throat> copulation with a married woman. In fact, he seems to be arguing against prostitution, which I do believe is a Roman value. I believe my father-in-law has no interest in the well-being of prostitutes, only in making sure that the sanctity of marriage is upheld and that we're not undermining any of the institutions which make this state great, an offense which is worthy of capital punishment, death. Ah, yes, here it is. My sexual desires accommodate all of history. The young arouse me, those of a later age touch me. All live in the city. I crave them. Everyone. Can you define the word everyone, please, Ovid? Wouldn't the word everyone include married as well as unmarried women? Well, yes, but... Yes, but what? I think you've just admitted to the fact that when you have an interest in sexual relations with a woman, that they are sometimes, if not often, married. Well, yes, but... But what? Your Eminence, the defendant would like a chance to speak, if he might. Very well. This better be good. Have any of you read my latest work, Metamorphosis? Perhaps some of your esteemed family might remember the story of Daphne and Apollo. Well, in it, as some of you remember, Apollo chases the beautiful Daphne through the woods. And the virginal nymph, however, wished nothing to do with him. But the god became so inflamed with desire, his heart burned so for her that he chased her and chased her over brooks, through the woods, under brambles, until her soft skin became bark, her arms, branches, and her curly locks twisted into dark green foliage. She had turned into a tree. Now, surely you don't therefore assume that I advocate turning all women into hard wood. <laughs> Order. <laughs> okay. Please, have you no respect for the dignity of this state? Apologies for the humor, your divine eminence. But the defendant has given up on writing poems such as Ars Armatoria, The Art of Love, which some people perceive to be promoting love affairs, and has moved on to works such as Metamorphosis, the collection of myths from around the world, and which includes sections about our national hero, Aeneas. How? How can you talk about hard wood when our very nation faces the gravest of moral crises. Grandfather, if I may interject. This is unbelievable. Have we no more sanctity or respect for our leaders? Does the blessing of Jupiter mean nothing? Grandfather. What is this? Father, if I may speak. Now, you do realize that you are here under trial for seditious acts. I don't think... You do not think what? I don't think you should execute this man. Why? What's your interest? 
Have you been fornicating with him, just like your mother? My interest in it is yours. Don't let your family ties sway you, Augustus. You know she is her mother's daughter. Grandfather, you know about the growing unrest in the encampments because of the current of Granger. Of course I do. Augustus. Well, if you wish to maintain power, I do not believe it the wisest choice in time to execute the country's most popular poet. Besides being a favorite of the people, the senators, on whose support you also rely, very much favor this writer. And you know the thin line that you walk with the senators. Augustus! Why, why are you saying these things? You know that there is rumor of your traitorous actions. Perhaps I am interested in your well-being. Do you remember that bronze helmet that you gave to me as a child? Your eminence, if the second defense may. Let her speak. You brought it back from Egypt, from your battle against Mark Antony. Well, I still have it. Take her away. Grandfather, I keep it under my bed in my small, modest room. I can't take her anymore. This trial is adjourned. Bring the prisoners into the courtyard and let them roam free. Death is not an appropriate punishment for either of them. Iberius. It's gonna be okay, bro. Daytime and nighttime persona got your back. We're off for now. We might as well enjoy our moment of freedom. Julia, your eminence. I cannot thank you enough. It's okay. You know, um, you being there, you uh, allowed me to show them that I still care for my grandfather. That's right, I am as always the hero of the situation. Bringing families together since 10 BCE. After all, was I not the one to advocate turning our divine Roman ladies into trees? <laughs> yeah, an admirable position, really. This could solve the fundamental problems of the Republic. <laughs> what was it like growing up here? I didn't really grow up here. No, I want to know. Just give me bits. Highlights from your childhood. Highlights? I don't know anything. Actually, uh, when we would visit with my mother, I did go down to the storeroom, and my brother and I would play hide-and-seek among the barrels. <laughs> but we could go down there now. Should we? You know we allowed? What is he gonna do? Hang Rome's favorite poet just for looking at his wine collection.
So what would you do next? If you could ride or do whatever you wanted, what would it be? Mm. Anything at all. Sky's the limit. Mount Olympus is dental hygiene. <laughs> what? Yes. I would go God by God. <laughs> and I would uncover whether each God rinses after they eat. Mm. Picks their teeth and spits. I think it would be an epic really worthy of any great writer, like Virgil. Mm -hmm. And completely non-controversial. Mm -hmm. What great tell do you do? <gasps> And that was the last I ever saw of Julia. Augustus exiled her on the spot. The mysterious charge against Julia the Younger was adultery. It was convenient to blame her for something which her mother had already been condemned. But I really think Augustus couldn't face his own hypocrisy. Shortly thereafter, her husband Paulus was executed for conspiracy. I never heard from Julia again. Her brother, too, was murdered shortly after Tiberius finally ascended to power. As for my plight, not wishing to make me too much of a martyr, Augustus exiled me on the spot also, for our Ars Armatoria, a poem I had written years before. I was forced to leave the city I'd grown to love and cherish. forced to live with the uncivilized barbarians up north. All this for a poem, and a mistake. The sloping footpath was traveled through the soundless silences. Steep, hard to see, thick with shadowy darkness. And now she slipped backward, holding out her arms, struggling to capture and be captured. Unlucky. She grabs nothing but the retreating air. She has not complained in any respect at all. For what could she complain? except that she'd been loved. Mm -hmm. 